It certainly was a busy day at Boston's United States federal court as a high profile murder trial progresses after delays for the pandemic. Lewis Coleman of Providence accused of kidnapping and killing Jesse Correa back in 2019 and today the jury for the trial was finalized. Then there were opening statements followed by testimony. 12 News reporter Brittany Schaefer was there for it all. She joins us now live from Boston with the details that are new at four. Brittany. Well, Kim Bryan, the courtroom was silenced as surveillance video showed Lewis Coleman rolling a suitcase out of his Providence apartment complex. The same suitcase police say they found inside a trunk with Jazzy Correa's body inside. Yeah, it was all right. Joelle Correa is confident his sister will get justice following the first day of her alleged killer's trial. I feel 100%. Certain Lewis Coleman will hear a guilty verdict from the 15 selected jurors. The Providence man is charged with kidnapping resulting in death in the 2019 murder of Jazzy Correa. The 23 year old was out in Boston celebrating her birthday when she disappeared. I'm the, the last person she was spoke to when she went that uh, the, the night. So for me, he remember all those text messages she was calling me to go out when she, for the next week. It just kind of breaking me down. The young mother's body was found in the trunk of a vehicle Coleman was driving in Delaware. An autopsy reveals the 23 year old died of strangulation and suffered blood force trauma. During opening statements, surveillance video showed Jazzy Correa leaving a Boston nightclub and later speaking with Coleman. The two were shown again at Coleman's Providence apartment complex on Chestnut Street. It's the moments in between crucial in this federal case of kidnapping resulting in death. Federal prosecution argues Coleman took Correa against her will while the defense says she went willingly. Those moments caught on camera and shown in court today, difficult for the family to see. Video, photo, it's something like you just feel like it just happened right now. And it's totally different. What do you hear when everything happened and for now you see it? We can't do like anything about it. We just wait for it because basically even the justice is not going to go back. She's not going to come back. So. And the charge of kidnapping resulting in death either carries a life sentence or the death penalty. Last year, federal prosecutors said they will not be seeking the death penalty in this case. Kim, Brian. And Brittany, we know there were opening statements from both the federal prosecutors and the defense. Did any witnesses take the stand? Well, Kim, following the opening statements, the first witness did take the stand today. It was Jazzy Correa's best friend, who she was with the night of her birthday, the night she was out in Boston, and also left the club with her. Coming up new at 5, I'll have more on what she says about their last moments together. Kim? Our Brittany Schaefer live for us in Boston. Brittany, thank you. To another high-profile case, the trial of Lewis Coleman is underway. The Providence man is accused of kidnapping and killing 23-year-old Jassy Correa back in 2019. Her body was later found stuffed in a suitcase in the trunk of a vehicle Coleman was driving in Delaware. 12 News reporter Brittany Schaefer joins us live from Boston with what testimony revealed in the courtroom today. Brittany? We'll make sure in this morning jury selection was finalized. Then came opening statements and this afternoon. The first witness was called to the stand. They questioned her about the night Jazzy Correa went missing along with including whether she had bruises or marks on her body. That question bringing the witness to tears. Video evidence for the first day of Lewis Coleman's federal trial for kidnapping resulting in death, revealing Jazzy Correa's final hours alive. With the whole the whole video picture we got and the whole process they showed us, I feel like he's a guilt. Opening statements revealing new facts and videos difficult for family to comprehend, leaving younger brother Joel Correa with more questions than answers. What was the reason making him do that? And why, if he did fight, what happened, happened between them? Why he didn't call the police that same night or same day? And why he put it about in a car and throw a bringing it to Providence. Also. Family of both the 23 year old and her suspected killer emotional in court today, as well as the first witness called to the stand. The woman was out celebrating Correa's birthday with her in Boston the night she disappeared. The witness says they left a venue nightclub around 2 a.m. and were walking back to the parking garage when Correa's friend pushed her to the ground. After calling for Correa to leave the friend, the witness continued to the parking garage, not knowing she would never see her again. Correa's body was found days later in a suitcase 
in the vehicle of the man who later that night took her to his Providence apartment. It's that moment crucial in this federal case where prosecution argues Coleman took Correa against her will while the defense says she went willingly. On day one of this likely lengthy trial, Joel tells me he will be in court every day demanding justice. In relationship between my sister, it was so strong I can't even say it because we've been through like a lot after the end because she was my only sister I got and I don't have anyone else so I'm going to tell the end and fight for her. And additional results of the autopsy were revealed in court today. Correa died of strangulation and also suffered blunt force trauma. Lewis Coleman's DNA was found underneath her fingernails. Live in Boston, I'm Brittany Schaefer, 12 News.